the moment you want the truth, as badly as you just now wanted air, you'll find it. We can show you the truth, but you have to want it. Show me. I want to know the truth. Our top story this morning, the deadly and destructive flooding in West Virginia. The death toll there has climbed to 23 and is expected to increase. West Virginia's governor has called in hundreds of National Guardsmen to help with search and rescue efforts. Yeah, the flooding destroyed several homes, uh, some torn from foundations and carried away by the swollen rivers and lakes. The trouble began on Thursday from heavy rains. On Friday, the body of a four-year-old boy was recovered after he was swept away in floodwaters just outside his home. Chris Van Cleve has more from the hard-hit community of White Sulphur Springs. Chris, good morning. Good morning. You can see the damage the Howard Creek did when it was raging. Debris is scattered as far as I can see. Homes have been destroyed. And police here in Greenbrier County say the bulk of those people who died in this storm lived here. This is ridiculous. This is all that's left of Chad Agner's home. It's completely gone, swept away by raging floodwaters Thursday night that tore through West Virginia seemingly out of nowhere. Pieces of the home next door ended up blocks away on the city's ball field. I figured there would be something left, you know, something standing, but there's nothing. I'm just right there. <laughs> this is Vicki Witt's home. The flood ripped apart her neighbor's house and sent it crashing into hers. It's over. We're not over, but we got out, so that's all that matters. Across the state, at least 100 homes have been seriously damaged or destroyed. It appears the river took over this mobile home park, and this house is resting partially in the street next to overturned cars. Roads have been ripped apart, and tens of thousands were without power. In just this one neighborhood in the small community of White Sulphur Springs, we counted more than a dozen homes destroyed. City police and paramedics spent Friday going door to door looking for survivors, or worse. Everyone knew it was going to rain. But no one knew there was going to be as devastating as it was. Mayor Lloyd Haynes. I can't even describe how heartbreaking it was. And the water's rushing down to you, and there's nothing you can do to help people. At least four of the dead are city residents who were pulled from their homes into Howard Creek. Do you feel lucky to be alive? Oh, yes. Very lucky. Mother of five, Nicole Lewis, was nearly one of them. But she managed to grab hold of this tree and withstand the punishing current for three hours. That had to be a tremendous amount of strength. How did you do that? I don't know. I just prayed to God and just kept my kids thinking about them. I had people over here talking to me, you know, saying they were calling, trying to get help, and I just held on. There was a couple times that I thought I was gone. The National Weather Service expected the rivers in West Virginia to crest overnight. The creek here has been dropping for about the last 24 hours, so focus increasingly on the cleanup here. Still, when you look at the 23 people dead, that's more than the people killed by tornadoes and lightning so far this year combined. Anne-Marie? So much devastation. Chris Van Cleve in White, Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. Thank you so much, Chris. Well, two people are dead after they tried to flee California's largest wildfire of the year. The fire, which is only 5% contained, is in Kern County. That's about 40 miles northeast of Bakersfield. It's been burning since Thursday. About 30,000 acres have been destroyed, including 80 homes. Carter Evans has more from Lake Isabella, a community just on the edge of the fire. Carter, good morning. Good morning. When this fire started on Thursday, it just exploded and the flames ripped through communities like this one so fast, the firefighters just couldn't keep up. And that's why so many homes just like this one were just burned to the ground. An inferno of destruction tore through rural mountain communities near Lake Isabella, overwhelming firefighters as home after home went up in flames. It was my grandparents' home. I, I grew up in that house and it's not even the things inside of it. It's something you can't replace. The fire caused propane tanks to explode and power lines were destroyed. As the fast moving flames spread, two people were killed. Two people who uh, we believe were, were trying to escape the fire. Uh, they had actually gotten out of their home and uh, apparently were overcome with smoke. Some 800 firefighters are attacking the wind whipped flames, but Louis Garcia saw no one when the fire closed in on his home. 
The house next door was already burning. It was engulfed. It was just a wall of fire. I couldn't hardly breathe, couldn't hardly see. His neighbors came to the rescue, climbing on his roof with garden hoses. If your neighbors hadn't pitched in, if you hadn't hosed down those trees. Well, I don't think I'd have a house today. This is the most destructive fire in a week that has seen drought-stricken California hit with several major wildfires. We're using hand crews, bulldozers, air tankers, helicopters, everything in our arsenal to stop this massive, devastating wildland fire. Now, these two deaths are being treated as a homicide until arson can be ruled out as the cause of the fire. Authorities are actually bringing in cadaver dogs today. They're going to be going through rubble like this, searching to see if there are any more fatalities. Meanwhile, the weather this weekend, it's expected to be hotter and windier. Anthony? No. Not good news. Carter Evans, thank you very much. In Lake Isabella, California. 80 homes are destroyed. 1,500 more threatened as a fire forces thousands to evacuate in Kern County. So far, it's burned about 19,000 acres near Lake Isabella. And that's where CBS 2's Randy Page joins us live with the latest. Randy, how's it looking out there? Well, Rick, by looking at the wind here, it appears to be far from over. I am standing at what was the front door of a home. Neighbors here tell us that it's owned by a Kern County firefighter. You see homes like this that are destroyed, homes next to it that are not, as we often see in wildfires. And as we look up McCray Road, which is the direction of where the fire has now gone, we are told many more homes are being threatened at this hour. Here's a closer look at the fire line from video taken just a short time ago. Give you an idea of the strength of the flames and the power of this fire. As you had mentioned, 1,500 homes at least are now under, are directly being threatened. And of course, the unpredictability of this fire is the wind, which is propelling this fire in directions that are very difficult to anticipate. In fact, we spoke to firefighters here just a short time ago who explained their concern in this entire area is that these strong winds can whip up these embers and send the fire in many different directions. So there is a lot of apparatus here. Fortunately, Lake Isabella is nearby to provide a water source. There are a lot of water dropping helicopters that are working this fire, but we can certainly tell you at this point the danger to these homes is far from over. Welcome back. Summertime officially here and a lot of us are swarming to the beaches, but in Texas they now have a new worry in addition to sunburn and of course sharks, a flesh-eating bacteria present in parts of that state. Casey Stiegel has more from our Dallas Bureau. Hi Casey, what is this? Heather, good to see you. Doctors, this is pretty scary. They're treating now two different cases here in the state of Texas for the suspected flesh-eating infection. Both picked up over the Father's Day weekend when a lot of people hit the beaches. One in the waters off of Galveston, and then you see from this map the other about 200 miles down the coast in Port Aransas, Texas. Well, officials believe in the Galveston incident near Houston, the victim had a cut on his foot, and that is how the pathogen may have entered his body. Scientists are still trying to identify the strain of bacteria they're dealing with here. 50-year-old Brian Parrott, a married father of three, did what most like to do in the summer heat, head to the beach with his family to cool off. But we should warn you, this next photo is graphic. Days later, after getting in that water, Brian's leg looked like this. His right foot had to be amputated just below the calf. He is slowly recovering, according to his family, but they still believe this perhaps could have been avoided. The problem I have is they didn't know about it. If they had known about it, they surely wouldn't have put the great-grandkids in there or his grandkids. Out of the 52 beaches in Galveston County, water samples detecting elevated bacteria levels in some areas have forced at least 10 advisories to be issued. Folks asked to uh, enter the water there at their own risk as doctors try to get to the bottom of what they're dealing with here. This is Dabu7. Got to give a shout out to Jeff and to Kachina, those that had sent me this information pertaining to these UN vehicles being spotted in Virginia. Now these were witnessed just yesterday. This was on 81 near Lexington. There is not a whole lot of information to add to this besides that they were seen on this flatbed being hauled by a trucker heading north 
and I'll share a couple closer shots here so you can see that these are the newer ones and as always most people say well are they shipping them overseas to somewhere else we don't know that for sure we don't we're not for sure of that just as we're not for sure if they're going to be used on the people the thing here is just to make note that they're here you don't see these every day we've seen UN vehicles in the past but these look to be some of the newer kinds uh, with, with the newer ports the newest design UN markings take a look at another shot here just being hauled down the highway now originally it was thought that they were spotted in Tennessee but that's not the case after getting down to the individual that actually took these photos Jeff he uh, witnessed these on 81 outside of Lexington that's in Virginia and where they're going to is anyone's guess now going northeast from Roanoke that's when you run into Lexington there and I mean, heading uh, north south no specifics on that I just want to let folks know that they were spotted in Virginia and it's not like these were the only two ones spotted as you can see here he states that I can't tell you how many of these things I've passed today on 81 near Lexington that's when he decided to finally pull out his camera take a picture and log what he was witnessing and other people had been sharing images as well of seeing the same thing um, semi trailers hauling two at a time down the highway and this is just a heads up to let folks know well president obama has designated stonewall inn in new york city a national monument the bar was the site of an uprising by the lgbt community in response to a police raid in 1969 the protest sparked the lgbt civil rights movement in the u.s the monument will include not just the inn itself, but also the nearby streets and sidewalks where the uprising took place. President Obama made the announcement in a video released by the White House. So this week, I'm designating the Stonewall National Monument as the newest addition to America's national park system. Stonewall will be our first national monument to tell the story of the struggle for LGBT rights. I believe our national park should reflect the full story of our country, the richness and diversity and uniquely American spirit that has always defined us, that we are stronger together, that out of many, we are one. Pride means, you know, uh, just being happy with who you are, being able to be yourself. At, at the end of the day, your happiness is most important, so you got to be proud of yourself. Pride to me means love and acceptance because as a homosexual girl, I just need acceptance from everyone and here I can get that from everyone who's here. Whatever you want to do and whatever you want to be, be it. That's it. That's all I can say. Don't let anyone make you feel less than yourself. That's it. It's terrible what happened in Orlando. It's all about education and understanding of everybody's needs and wants and desires and values. Well, just long story short, stay safe, stay happy, and have fun. <laughs> the show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, 
who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. In the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. The report saying the, uh, the, the Pope had said the Roman Catholic Church should seek forgiveness uh, from homosexuals. Could you put that in context for us? Sure, Michael. This, this again was part of that airborne press conference. Uh, recently, a very senior cardinal and a close advisor to Pope Francis uh, suggested uh, that, uh, that both the church and the broader society have mistreated gays over the years, and he suggested that maybe it's time for the church to make an apology. So the question to Pope Francis was, do you agree with that, uh, particularly in the context uh, of the tragedy of Orlando in the United States, the shootings at the Pulse nightclub? Uh, 
Uh, and the Pope's response was uh, that, uh, that he believes any time that Christians could have defended someone and failed to do it, uh, that they should make an apology. So that applies to gays, but he went on to say it's probably not just gays to whom we should be apologizing. We probably also should be apologizing to the poor, uh, to uh, women who have been exploited, uh, to children who have been taken advantage of through child labor, to you know people who have been victims of armed conflicts that the church has blessed over the years. Uh, so while he certainly was supportive of the idea of an apology, to, uh, to gays, he put that in a much broader context. Implants are a popular way to keep track of pets. Now, some people are getting them, but for a different reason. The microchips can help unlock doors or log into a cell phone. Consumer Watch reporter Julie Watts explains. Tim Shank uses it to open his front door and manipulate his smartphone. And it turned off my ringer. Chrissy Heishman uses hers instead of a key card at work. And it's just a little glass bead like the size of a grain of rice. They're among a growing number of people implanting technology under their skin. We don't want to carry devices. We want devices built into us. Zoltan Ishvan of Mill Valley belongs to the transhumanist party. The movement seeks to radically improve humans through digital implants, even genetic manipulation. For now, a common procedure, implanting programmable RFID chips under the skin. But instead of a doctor's office, many are turning to tattoo and piercing shops. We're doing the procedure start to finish just like we would do an earring, a nose ring, a belly button ring. It's just a little piece of glass. The online company Dangerous Things sells a device and injection kit for 57 bucks. But they're not alone. A San Francisco company is developing tiny implantable digital tattoos. They'll authenticate credit cards, track your location, even collect health data. But the next big thing does present an age-old tech problem. I have the older chip now. I need to get the upgrade. Constantly being forced to upgrade implanted technology can mean a pain in more than just the pocketbook. Now, Zoltan says his chip only works with Android and Samsung, and he actually has an Apple. These devices do come with some other risks, in addition to, of course, infection. Uh, implantable tech raises some privacy and hacking concerns as well. Dangerous Things, the company that sells that chip, warns its device has not been tested for or certified by regulatory agencies. There's something weird going on with Walmart. Are we now seeing the true form of one of the world's largest companies? Is Walmart an entity of the government, operating in the private sector, meant to, to usher in martial law? Is its purpose found even in its name? I will take you through six facts that expose Walmart's deep connection to the U.S. government and its preparation for mandatory RFID chipping and martial law coming to the U.S. I would highly advise you to listen carefully to this entire video. The information contained in it is extremely important. Fact number one. To understand the truth about Walmart, you first need a history lesson. The founder, Sam Walton, is long deceased, but his legacy is very much alive. What is he remembered for? Well. You may not know that Sam Walton was a part of the U.S. intelligence agency during World War II and a security chief over internment camps located inside of the United States. These camps held hundreds of thousands of whites of German and Italian descent and Asians of Japanese descent. They were held there after FDR violated their constitutional rights. Sam Walton oversaw these prisoners of war. The Walmart U.S. government connection is not new, you see. It goes way, way back. Armed with that information, let us continue to fact number two. From 2001 through 2016, Walmart has received an estimated 50 to 100 billion dollars in secret subsidies granted by the U.S. government. We know several industries are subsidized by the government to keep prices low. But why Walmart? There are entire websites dedicated to following Walmart's grants, tax breaks, and earmarks. These websites unanimously agree that Walmart has received tens of billions of dollars in kickbacks over the years. Why are they getting so much money? 
Is it merely to keep their prices low? Or is it for other expenditures? Fact number three. Walmart has struck a deal with the U.S. government, hiring 130,000 reserve, active duty, and veterans in the United States over the past three years. A massive force of highly trained and skilled soldiers. It's an odd fact, because recently they just fired thousands of regular workers and closed 269 stores because of financial problems, or so they said. Walmart explained that their 2016 store closings were an attempt to save money. So why did they just hire 130,000 new employees? Of course, we always celebrate when veterans are treated with respect and given good jobs, but this is strange. 130,000 sounds more like a small army. In fact, Walmart's soldiers make up 10% of the company's total U.S. workforce that is a huge proportion of new hires, especially for a company who just claimed that they had financial difficulty six months ago. What in the world is Walmart doing with its new army? Fact number four. In the last 20 days, two dozen homicides or attempted murders have happened on Walmart's premises around the United States. These crimes range from shootings to stabbings to arson to suicide to attempted vehicular homicide. Having reviewed these alleged crimes, I ask the question, are they even legitimate? Are they FEMA exercises that Walmart is carrying out alongside the Department of Homeland Security? Many details from the Walmart crimes aren't adding up, and it makes me question the validity of the entire event. For example, I'll play a 911 call from the Amarillo, Texas Walmart shooting. In it, a witness says that two gunmen are clearly involved, but later, only one is killed by the SWAT team and no hostages are injured. My question is, were Amarillo and other Walmart shootings legitimate? The audio in the Amarillo case told us that there were two shooters, not one. Likewise, in other alleged massacres around the U.S., major discrepancies were made that could make one question the validity of the event. In San Bernardino, there were supposed to be three shooters, not two. In Orlando, it was reported early on that one or two additional people were involved in the three-hour rampage. People interviewed claimed that the additional people were holding the door shut to prevent escape of club goers, yet police insist only Omar Mateen was involved. Why did these police reports contain so many contradictions to the witnesses of the event? Are these DHS exercises in preparation for an outbreak of anarchy in America? Fact number five. Let's revisit a major point I brought up in a prior video about Walmart. The discounter is literally in the back pocket of the U.S. government, cooperating on a variety of different initiatives. One of these was a massive introduction of RFID chipping into Walmart's supply chain back around 2003, introduced alongside the Department of Defense. Why was the DOD involved with Walmart on RFID? Walmart was also cooperating with DHS Secretary Janet Napolitano on an initiative to report suspicious people in their facilities. Why is the DHS working with Walmart on this? Additionally, several former Walmart executives are currently working for the U.S. government in FEMA positions and emergency preparedness. For example, Walmart disaster manager Brian Coons was appointed to spearhead Florida Emergency Response and Disaster Readiness Divisions. Why are these former Walmart executives being promoted in the government to major positions of disaster response? Fact number six. Walmart has recently cooperated with Omar Mateen's former employer called G4S on initiatives in its U.S. stores involving security. Could there be a connection between what happened in Orlando and Walmart? Before I address this, I want to caution viewers. Please do not believe what you are being told on television about Orlando. 
the elites have already gotten what they want, and that is an outcry for heightened security. In order to have security, they'll have to take away guns. They'll have to use more biometrics and RFID to track you. They'll have to put up more cameras to watch you. We're living in 1984. Fear incited by Islamic terrorism is their tool of choice to get you to give in. Notice the cry for gun control after Orlando. The cry for more security. Do not be fooled by their agenda. The lamestream media has convinced everybody about Mateen's radical Islamic ties in order to scare you. I am not interested in the misleading Islamic terrorism narrative that began in 1945 and accelerated in 2001. The narrative is the same. Islamic terrorist attack happens, followed by calls for more gun control, the Patriot Act, more internet monitoring, more cameras, more things to stop a future event like this from happening. It's the same response every single time. Once Bin Laden got old, once he didn't cause the fear that they needed him to cause, they got rid of him. And then they created scary ISIS. Mateen's ISIS connection is a fabrication to get you to submit. I'm not buying it. I am more interested in his nine-year career with a company called G4S, which is the largest security company in the world. If you've ever seen the movie Resident Evil, G4S might bring to mind the Umbrella Corporation, a secretive organization that operates in the shadows. G4S is the third largest employer in the world with a virtual stranglehold over cybersecurity and cyber data in almost every country. It does have other interests, however, including RFID chipping. The company states on its website that one of its goals is to use RFID to track assets and people anywhere in the world. Back in 2011, G4S put in a patent request with the U.S. government for an RFID device that would be used to track people who were incarcerated. No joke. The RFID device is tamper resistant, worn on the hand or wrist, and is meant to tag and follow prisoners. The patent was just made public in February of 2016, and now G4S will work closely with Walmart. An article published in April of 2016 indicates that Walmart and G4S quietly signed a deal, an agreement on a huge initiative that will change Walmart's entire system of payment in all stores. There will be a gradual rollout of the new system until it is fully implemented. In conclusion, I believe there is beyond ample evidence to suggest that Walmart is serving a major purpose as we head toward the Marshall State. Greetings, everybody, and God bless you. Um, I wanted to come on here and encourage you guys today. Um, I actually was speaking with, with Brother Todd yesterday. We, we had a long talk on the, on the phone. Many of you know him, uh, Hidden Bride on YouTube. Um, and, I, and, we, and we speak with Brother Jordan, too, which you guys know is, is Revelation now. I think it's 311 on YouTube. I may be wrong about that. But I always talk with Brother Jordan and, and Brother Todd just because, guys, we're in a race. You know, the, this life is a race, and, you know, the, the finish line's in sight. You know, but we, we have to finish this race strong. We have to encourage one another. If we have another one of our brothers and sisters, you know, that's, that's falling behind a little bit, you know, that's, that's out of breath or needs help, we've got to help carry them. You know, help, help, them, help us finish this race strong because um, we're in this together. You know, Jesus is coming back. No man knows the day or the hour. We're to occupy until that trumpet does sound. Um, but I've been getting a lot of emails about people saying that there's there's certain things they're worried about with their salvation. Um, maybe one person's struggling with this sin, one person's struggling with that sin. 
The reality is Romans 6.23 says, for all have sinned and come, and, you know, in Romans it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Um, we are all sinners. You know, none, none, our, our righteousness are as filthy rags. Um, but we need, you know, those areas of my, our life that need work, because all of us do. Everybody, we're a work in progress. You know, these bodies cannot enter into God's kingdom. That's why when, when the rapture does happen, we're transformed, all right, into our glorified body. Um, but I, I want everyone, you know, spend time today, because me and Brother Todd were praying yesterday, and, uh, you know, the, the Lord was kind of confirming to our spirits a little bit what's written in Romans 5. And I wanted to share that with you guys, just to, you know, lift you guys up today. Um, so go to Romans chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our, Jesus, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand in rejoice and hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offenses of one ma many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. For as, um, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So if you're someone that, that's you know feeling a little discouraged lift yourselves up read this read i mean god's word is great but read romans 5 it'll encourage you we're going to finish this race strong and if your need lifting up email me i always put my email you'll see him in the comments all right email me i'm here to encourage you to lift you up i feel like that's what my calling you know because we do get down we you know we just need to be lifted up sometimes guys and i wanted to lift you up today the other thing, too, is, you know, if you're someone that has not called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he is coming back. I mean, you look around the world at, at, at all the stuff that's going on. He foretold, the Lord Jesus foretold that when these things begin to come to pass, to lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh, that, that he is coming, that the time is at hand. But the day of salvation is always here. This is something Brother Todd said to me yesterday, too. Today's always a day of salvation because we're not, we don't know when we're going to die. You know, death can come quickly. We don't know. Today could be your day. Today could be my day. I, I don't know. No one knows. But when we die, there's two destinations. There's heaven and there's hell. 
And there is one way to the kingdom of heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You see, we're all guilty. We are all sinners. But Jesus Christ paid the, paid the price for your sins on that cross at Calvary. He bled on that cross for you. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We all have free will. The choice is ours. We can receive that gift. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him to forgive you. He loves you. He died for you. He died for you so that you might live through him. Eternal. Eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. But the choice is yours. This life is but a speckle of eternity. So make the best decision of your eternity today if you have not made that decision. Romans 10.9 says that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. Invite him into your heart. Invite him into your life. Make him Lord of your life. Be born again. It's a journey. When you're born again, just like when someone's born into the world, they walk, they, they crawl, they learn to walk. Then they're running. Then they're growing. It's the same thing. I'm still growing in the Lord. I have a lot of things to work on, and I know you do watching this too. But invite him into your life. Be born again today, because except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> Ask him to forgive you, because we are all guilty. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, because the Bible says that if you shall confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Because you see, there's one mediator between God and men, and that is Jesus Christ. A father, a priest, is not he cannot forgive you of your sins. The Virgin Mary cannot forgive you of your sins. The Easter Bunny, St. Nicholas, any other false gods or idols, they will not forgive you. It is Jesus Christ. He is the one that paid the price for you on that cross. So give your life to him today. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. Make the best decision of your eternity today. Because he loves you so much. He is waiting for you with open arms. Receive that gift today. And God bless each and every one of you. Keep looking up. Finish this race strong. We're going to be there for one another to help, help each other cross that finish line. Because the time is at hand. We're to occupy and preach the good news of Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Son of God. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. But I wanted to lift you guys up today. God bless you, each and every one of you. And keep looking up. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is coming quickly. God bless you. For God will bring every deed into judgment, Ben Judah, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, and I will give every man according to his ways and according to the things he has done. By the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. For by grace you are saved. Through faith, this is not for yourselves. It is the gift of God. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. He who believes in the Son is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Repent. Jesus is coming. Don't throw your life away. Give it to Jesus while there's still time, please. And he will hold us accountable. Time is running out. And I don't want you to go to hell. <laughs> You've sinned against God. 
like I have. He calls us to love and obey him in everything we do. What we do in front of people, what we do in secret. Even down to what we think. God loves you. 2,000 years ago, he proved that. God became a man, Jesus Christ, and he suffered and died on the cross to save you. He literally died to take your punishment and my punishment upon himself so that we could be forgiven and set free. When Jesus rose from the dead and he ascended to heaven, he defeated death and hell, and he's offering you and I eternal life. God can do anything. If you are willing, God can save you. Confess your sins and turn away from them. And put your faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus, if it's not too late, forgive me for it. My sins. Jesus is king. Jesus is king.